Shalom and welcome to Two Minutes of Torah. This year is entitled, A Commemoration and Celebration of a True Family Patriarch. Right, it's a chag. I receive a call from my beloved cousin, David Aber. Tell me bad news. Uncle Herbie passed away. Herbie Aber is a chonol of racha, 91 years old. And you'd say, okay, that's the way of the world, a 91-year-old, that's an amazing accomplishment. He was fine and well, Baruch Hashem, Pachot HaYotzeh, till the last moment. And that's it, that's, that's life and death. But uh, Uncle Herbie was different, uh, his death was uh, shocking. He somehow was above life in so many ways. So my mother's sister, Elaine, she should live and be well, married to Herbie almost 70 years. And they made a monumental move, 1969, 50 years ago. I remember like yesterday, we lived in Bell Harbor, 15 minutes away from Far Rockaway. And I remember being there on Reed's Lane when they were packing up the house and getting ready to move. I was a little boy, five years old, and picking up in 1969, the country's 20 years old. It's a fledgling country, not knowing if it's going to survive or not to pick up in 1969 with four children, end of elementary, beginning of high school age, and just the beginning of college age. Debbie was still senior year, so she stayed back one more year in the grandparents' house in Bell Harbor. That's going against all the rules. Going against all the rules. How could Herbie and Elaine do that? Because they knew. They knew. That Hashem sent two invitations to them to come home in 1300 before the common era at Sinai. Hashem already said, the Yerashta, you could conquer Eretz Israel, the Kivashtim, you come and you live in Eretz Israel. That's been for thousands of years, that invitation. And they knew the last 200 years of history screaming out with minor, minor events, the swamp drained in Petach Tikva here, then the Balfour Declaration, a major event, San Remo Conference, 1947 vote, Russians swaying the vote, and then 48, establishment of the state, and 67, tripling the size. Herbie and Elaine heard very clearly God saying, come home. Many other people may have heard the message, but somehow it was lost in the translation somewhere along the way, but not for Herbie and the rest of the family. They came against all odds. And it was so challenging. Obviously, it was decades before Nefesh, Nefesh. Decades before you had any communities where with a strong Anglo presence. Or the end. I know from Beit Shemesh, Beit Shemesh. Any type of Anglo or Lim community. More Dati Lumi, more Haredi, Israeli Haredi, Anglo Haredi. They didn't exist. And they couldn't exist. The country was 20 years old. People who lived there were the ones who started the country. And it was just beginning, beginning. Olim were beginning to come. So they jumped in. They jumped in. They did something that was a much Herculean. And, of course, it was not simple move at all. But Baruch Hashem, each child developed built an incredible bite in Imam Yisrael. And it's no coincidence, no surprise at all, that Herbie and Elaine, of course, met us in the airport July 4th, 2001, when we made Aliyah. And of course they were there for us. And they were there every step of the way, coming to Beit Shemesh, meeting at restaurants. First they'd come meet us in Beit Shemesh. Well, they restaurants 20 years ago in Beit Shemesh, but there was one around. Now, Baruch Hashem, there's dozens and dozens. And we'd meet, and sometimes we'd meet in Ranana, we'd meet in Tel Aviv. It's such a beautiful connection. And it's not coincidence that the four kids, each one played a special role in our Aliyah as well. Sharon on a, and Benny, they should live and be well, and Petar Tikva, their beautiful home, where on our pilot trip, they already had the family over to spend a beautiful Shabbat in Petar Tikva, make us feel at home and welcome and just love the country that much more. And Debbie and Chico, every time we traveled around the country, we'd always call them up. And they would guide us, certainly before ways. How do you get around? Our oh, Hashem country is always growing, and one map already become outdated, right? A few months after it was published. And Chico were always there to help us guide us through the country. 
and then David and Shana, a few weeks after we made Aliyah, they come with a whole bunch of coolers so we could go on trips together, which we still use to this very day. And they took us out to Mitzvah Masua to make us feel welcome at home and feel connected to the family. And then Jonathan Menucha, Rav Yonatan, famous Mashkiach, Ruchani, in Eretz Israel, the moving day, on <laughs> the moving day, he came with his drill. And he's drilling in all the cabinets. They're ready to go ahead. So that whole spirit of love and connection from Herb and Elaine just, just went down to the next generation and all the future generations, making us feel so at home in this new land. And what they did in 1969, making this their home, they just set a trend for the family. Alan Roberta came years later. Morty and Debbie came years later, 1980, about a decade later. Then you had David and Jasmine Brofman, and the family just kept growing and growing, setting roots here. And every time I'd see Herbie, Daniel, are we winning? Are we winning? What's going on? And it sounds like just a cute question, but it's a, it's a deep question. Because the fact is, here, many people thought the Gula redemption is going to be a magical process where God wants go, goes ahead and brings us on wings of eagles, literally, and he'll drop the Migdash from the heavens, and anything short of that, a process that's slow and windy with a Herzl and a Ben-Gurion and Golda Meir and the Agun. That, that can't be the beginning of the redemption. People are not even necessarily religious. They're going to go ahead and they're bringing the redemption. They're major forces playing a lion's share. No, that can't be. But many of us, myself included, and certainly Herbie, no, it's a long and windy road. And it's a surprising one. And it's not going to be so simple and grand all the time. You might have lightning once in a while. Shy. 48, 67. But you're going to have the Gush Katif also in 2005. You're going to have setbacks. That's part of life. That's part of the redemption of the Jewish people. So when Herbie would say to me, ah, are we winning, Daniel? Meaning, yes, we have setbacks. But in the big picture, of course, we both smiled at each other. Of course, we're winning. Like we were 80 years ago in Auschwitz. In Europe. And even before, the, the nation was falling apart with Haskalah. Here we are, a vibrant, growing nation. Number eight, in terms of world power. That's not per capita, it's an objective figure. And the spiritual growth is amazing as well. The yeshivas and the Balchuva movement, the Hasidish world, the yeshivish world, the Datilumi world, the Sephardic world. It's growing. Of course there's so much more to do. But that's what he meant, are we winning? Yes, there's setbacks. And we knew that. But you have to look at the big picture. And we are growing. We are growing. And we'd get together. Sometimes our conversations would revolve around Ramak Beit Shemesh. And the idea of having an Anglo Haredi crowd where there are certain parts, um, a principal of a school with, it's a Haredi school, but Yom Atzmo Yom Zikaron are observed. And, and we want to inculcate that in the this, in this children to appreciate Medina Yisrael and the Bracha and the Gulab at the same time in the Haredi world. He's like, how does that work? Because normally it's, you're in this world, you're in that world, that you're so curious to understand and appreciate the new developments that are going on here. In the last conversation we had about a week ago, so, Marahma Or, Ashur, Ramapi, Shemesh, where it's Hashem going to be building a second floor. So, my beloved sister Amy, we sent the WhatsApp to the group, to the family, Silan Fun Abra group, Myers group, that it wants to contribute something in memory of my father, Marvin Myers, Sechon Olivracha. And Herbie called me and said, no, 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 you can't do that for Marvin. Because they were very close. They worked together in Quiltex for almost 20 years, and then he just picked up, left the business for unknown, uncharted territories, Herbie and Elaine. And he, they were very close till the end, till 10 years ago. When my father passed away, he said, no, you have to write a letter to every family. You have to go ahead. Everyone loved Marvin. And let's see if we could really have everyone contribute and maybe who knows where we could get together funds and maybe have some nice portion of the shul dedicated in his memory and he was crying when he's crying talking about them because they were so close they both anchored 
my father and her a bit, but they were dreamers, seeing the big picture of Klai Israel. That was my last conversation with Herbie about two weeks ago. His love for my father. And it's strange, everyone knows me, I'm not a very mystical kind of person, but when he got up the day of his death and said that it was some strange dream he had, Marvin, my father, and a few others welcoming him. And what did it mean? Who knows? We don't know Hashem's ways. But is it possible that Hashem sent some message that his time has come? and you move into your next chapter in your life, people always say, oh, Hashem takes us when He fulfills His task. It's not a simple statement in terms of Allah and our People say that tracking down that source, tracing down a source, that's not simple. But I think we could say with Herbie Eber, Zechet Tzadik Lavracha, He went ahead, He went against eh, all the rules. He made a game-changing move in 69 to come and raise a family four generations B'nai Torah, Tamidei Chachamim, high-level service in the economy here, in the, in the military here, in every tchum in Eretz Yisrael. And that four generations, think of four generations of Be'achat Kohanim together, to go ahead and make such a monumental move at such a crucial, critical point in the Jewish history. Maybe in this case we could say, wow, 91, he fulfilled his task. And Hashem was telling him, maybe we don't know Hashem's way, maybe Hashem was telling him, Yashiko Kirby. And now, the next chapter in your life, in your existence, not in the physical form, another kind of a form, he leaves a legacy behind him. Elaine, we love so much. Such a beloved aunt. And the children, the grandchildren, the great grandchildren, and all the cousins and the extended family. We always, always look up to Herbie, the groundbreaker, the pioneer, halutz in the true sense of the word. And I think, as my beloved cousin David said yesterday, not the eulogy. Very often people go ahead on Halamoe. They say, we can't do eulogies, but then they go ahead and speak for two hours of eulogies. Not yesterday. I spoke a couple of minutes. It was 10 minutes beginning to the end. A couple of points about Herbie's life. And that was it. And what a kavod to Herbie to keep the halacha of an observe, as painful as it was. We all wanted to cry for hours and talk about Herbie, but no, halacha said differently. What a kavod. What an honor. And what did David say? It's a celebration of his life. So yes, we're commemorating. Yes, it's sad, but I still felt comfortable doing this, even in Halamoi. This isn't a eulogy. This is a celebration of an amazing man had such a profound effect on the immediate family, the extended family, and so many members of Klai Israel. As a member, should always be a blessing, it should be an inspiration, Hashem should grant Nechama to the family, and good health, and bracha, and hatzlacha, and Yetz Hashem help us all bring uh, uh, Klai Israel a step closer to the Gula Shlema. Shalom.